came straight to lead and got a workout in at 3.30, so I guess I'm rolling. Um, uh, you know, it was a weekend of, anytime you go on the road for an extended period of time, you learn a lot. It was definitely a weekend of learning. Um, you get exposed. Um, it's hard uh, when you're used to the comforts of home in terms of getting your weight down and competing. Um, and then you don't have those comforts at home um, and you have to go on the road and compete. So Thursday night was okay. Saturday wasn't so okay. Uh, not in terms of maybe wrestling skill, but more so just, you know, we weren't tough enough. Um, you know, Campbell came with a, a, a well-coached team, an old team, a mature team. Um, those guys have been drinking the, the cola Kool-Aid for a long time and it showed. Um, and so, you know, we got beat in toughness. Anytime you're losing in overtimes, uh, anytime you're losing in overtimes, I think it's a toughness thing. Um, not getting uh, those bonus points at the end of matches. Um, you know, there's the, the, we lost to a good team. Uh, Cam Campbell's a good team and, and a well-coached team and a tough team. And we just weren't tough enough. Um, and then, you know, Arizona State, kind of some of the same. Um, probably a little bit more talented team. Um, you know, when we... When you don't have a guy like Jared Dagan, you don't have a guy like Austin Gomez. That's when when the Austin Gomez that, that, that does the right things, uh, you got two pretty tough guys. And so right now we're you know we're really just kind of trying to look for that guy or guys to step up and you know more guys. You know we've got some tough guys. I mean Ian Parker is an incredibly tough guy, um, does things right all the time. Um, and and you know I think David Carr showed some real toughness because he had a really good competitor. Um, uh, against Arizona State, I think he could have slammed the door shut at the last minute, and we got to get him to understand that he can slam the door shut. But really did a good job for six minutes. Um, you know, and the rest was just kind of so-so. You know, we had some good things, we had some bad things, but but overall we got to just get tougher. And, and um, you know, South Dakota State's on a high right now. They just beat you and I in, in, in you and I, which is a hard thing to do. So those guys are going to be high as a kite. They're going to be gunning for us. And when you walk into a place like that that's gunning for you, you better be tough. So with that, um, it's your turn. The biggest news, I guess, of the weekend is Sam Cobra moving down to 174. What was that process like for him? What went into that decision, and how did you think he performed? I thought he did pretty good. Uh, you know, I don't know what you guys thought, but for the first time down to weight, uh, you know, dropping 10 pounds, we sat down the night after the Tennessee Chattanooga dual meet, which was, what, December 15th, and I had the thought in my head, but I didn't really spring it on him until then, and I said, we're going to do this. Um, uh, I, I want you to consider doing this, and here's why you do want to do it. And you know what? He was on board. He went home over break for seven days and did everything right, came back where he was supposed to be. Um, and, you know, it didn't feel great against it, but it was a one-hour away and against Utah Valley. It didn't feel great, but probably was surprised that he wasn't as tired as he was. Um, but felt pretty good on, on uh, Saturday. And, you know, I think he came off the mat. Uh, Sam's chink is he's afraid to get tired, but his shape is great. When you train that hard to get down to a weight, um, you, you, by default, you get in shape. I mean, if you put all, if you saw the hours of running and cardio that he did from December 15th until we got on that plane to Utah, um, his shape was fine. Um, so I think that uh, sky's the limit for him. I mean, he took, you know, he just got to go out and do more and, and push more. And, and that's kind of always been the challenge with Sam. But I think everybody sees it. If that guy goes out very intentional for seven minutes, I think it's a good move. I think he can. I think that weight's very, very doable. And I told him, I said, we're not doing this to be an All-American dude. But we're doing this to be in the finals. This is a f move to get in the finals. And if, if, you, if you're not on board to get in the finals and what it takes to get in the finals, then let's just stay up at 84. And it's obviously much better for Marcus Coleman. You know, Marcus, uh, we didn't even know, but the last dual meet before Christmas, he had mono. We didn't test him till the day after, not intentionally. We just didn't have the time. But he was really sick that whole week uh, and was really sick uh, up until about January 1st. So he was for two weeks, last two weeks of December, he was really sick. And I think a lot of his sickness um, came from he was really having a hard time making 174. And so I think you saw a little bit of Marcus. You know, he, he got beaten overtime by the 10th ranked guy uh, from Campbell in the nation on really four days of practice. And, uh, you know, wrestled Valencia pretty darn tough at the end of that match. So I think we got a guy there. I think, that, I think it's going to be a good move for us. Now, you know, Sam's got to, he's got to continue to pay the price. And that's what we'll have to see is, is, is how, how important it is to him doing the little things going forward to keep good at that weight class. I remember well, Sam's first match was at heavyweight, interestingly enough. Yeah. And then I think his freshman year is at 197. Then your first year here, 
he moved down to 84. And I remember you saying he had a hard time making 184 back then. Mm -hmm. What kind of growth have you seen from Sam? Maturity, maturity, more than anything, just the word maturity. You know, he's a lot more mature and, um, you know, I think it's more important to him. I think it, there's still another notch of it's important to me. Um, like you get up every morning and you want to be the guy in the top step of the podium. I don't think, I think he gets up some mornings and wants to, and then some mornings he's not sure. But when you get up every morning and you want to be the top guy in the podium, then you got a chance to be the top guy in the podium. I mean, truly get up, truly wake up and want to be the guy in the podium. All right. And, and you went to bed on time to make sure that when you woke up, you felt good. And I, I see that guy, I see the potential in that guy. So, you know, if he doesn't do it this year, then we might move him to 65 next year. So. <laughs> Do you think he maybe sniffed that or maybe wanted it more after getting to the quarters last year, getting to the blood round? I think it, I think it's all a process, and I think he did, yeah. You know, and again, the same the same, the same same monster that jumps up, uh, you know, that we saw this weekend jumped up at the, at the quarterfinals, just not going out and slamming the door shut when you have the ability to slam the door shut. I mean, I think you saw that first takedown up against Valencia. It was, he was up two, two to nothing, like boom. And then you didn't see that sense of urgency much the rest of the match where you just got to want to go out and wrestle like, like his brother Zahid at Valencia, where the guy wants to kill you for seven straight minutes. When we get that kind of guy, there's that kind of wrestler in there. So uh, I know that's you know, obviously much easier said than done, but I think that's the high side for him. Conversely, what does the bump up maybe do for Coleman? Makes him feel good and strong, and he's explosive. And it take, and, you know, I think the, sep the cut to 74 was taking his pop away. I just don't think he had that, you know, and, and we didn't see a lot of great practices out of him. When you're, when you're, you know, and I think the kid might have grown a little bit in the off season. I mean, he was weighing. Geez, I was surprised that when they did the body fat test, that he was even even legal to go 174. So um, uh, I think it's going to be a good move for him. I think he's going to have some pop and some strength. And you know, he comes into practice. You know, ever since January one, he's come in. He's really had some great workouts, and we didn't see a lot of that in, in November and December. Zahid is Zahid, but he didn't look undersized at all, at least in his other no, matches. No, I think Coleman's a good size 184 pounder, you know, and he's, he's strong and he's athletic. And, you know, he, he, we're changing the philosophy. Instead of cardio a lot in the mornings right now, he's, he's uh, you know, he's lifting. He had, a, he had a great lift this morning. I was in there this morning early, and Coach Durbin had him throwing around all kinds of weight. So I think it's going to be a good recipe. What's the status on Jarrett Dagan? Uh, Jarrett's going to go, we're going to go some live this week and see how he feels. So, um, is he going to be back this weekend? No, he's not going to be back this weekend. Is he going to be back for Oklahoma State? 50-50. Is he going to be back by February 1st? That's the goal. We hope so. But uh, this weekend, probably not. Leisure stepped in. He filled in when 3-1 and one this weekend. He's really filled in admirably well for uh, for Degan. So have a couple more duels in him. Are you thinking he's going to have much much better results. He did a good job for us. He's making improvements. Yeah, he's making improvements. He's starting to push it more in the room. You know, sometimes getting the lineup and being the starter, that happens. Um, I did tell him 45 seconds before he got pinned to not go upper body with that guy because the guy would pin him and then he got thrown a pin. So I did tell him that, by the way. <laughs> and he came off the mat and he goes, well, it wasn't like you didn't tell me. So, um, I told him. So uh, I, I've known that, that kid that he wrestled since he's been a little kid. And uh, I, I, he had a nosebleed, and I said, it's a good time to tell you you're up by eight or nine. Don't go upper body with him. So what did he do? He went upper body and got pinned. But lessons learned. And then Gannon Gremmel had a really good southern scuffle. Comes back this weekend, maybe not the best weekend um, that we see down again. What does he have to do to bounce back? Well, he's, he's got a target on his back now, and you've got to learn how to wrestle with a target on your back. And, we, and, and that's kind of the moral of the story this weekend is I don't think, you know, we had a target on our back. And, and Campbell was gunning for it. And so just like South Dakota State, uh, you know, South Dakota State had a, a good weekend with you and I, but they're still going to have a chip on their shoulder, um, probably because of what happened last year and just because, you know, we're, we're, we're one of the teams to beat. And uh, we have to understand how to wrestle that, how to, how to do that. And Gannon, you know, he, he goes out and has a big time weekend. And sometimes kids get too uh, caught up in reading all the social media and, and all of that stuff instead of putting their nose to the grindstone and going to work. So he's got to... Uh, you know, when you go win a big tournament like that, everybody sees you and everybody wants a piece of you, and then you have to respond. And he didn't do a good job of responding mentally to that. Um, so I'm curious to see how he rebounds. You know, you always learn a lot about guys when they have a bad weekend. He does let us know when they're eating good. <laughs> he does. We feed him. We feed him good. Yeah, he likes to. I think you know, if Gannon's feeling good. He'll tweet that the sun went out and the sun went under, and then whatever's next. Uh, do you have an update on Austin Gomez at all? And has he's uh, he's uh, training hard again? Um, you know, like I said, we're gonna medical him. We just need to keep following the uh, concussion protocol. He's he's scrapping some a little bit right now. He's not full go yet, but 
we're making progress. You know, he's on the road traveling with us. He's helping out the team. So um, it looks like from all practical purposes, he'll have three years left and, and hopefully learned a lot this year.